Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is multiply two strings and it is a medium level problem. So the problem statement says that we have been given two number strings and they are S1 and S2 respectively. We have to calculate their product. Now we have been given a note that uh, the numbers can be negative and we are not allowed to use any built-in function to convert the string into integers and there can be zeros at the beginning of the numbers. So the first line we understood that the numbers can be negative so we all have to take care of that. For the second line they say that we are not allowed to use any built-in function to convert them into integers but uh, I believe that even if you wanted to convert them into integers it is not really possible because the length of the strings are up to 10 to the power 3. So if the number of digits in any number is up to 10 to the power 3 that means the number can itself be up to 10 raised to the power 10 to the power 3 right so that's that's a really big number. And the maximum that we can store in data types like long long is around 10 to the power 18 only. So that's a big difference. So I believe this particular problem cannot be solved that way. Now the time complexity is O of n1 into n2 and the space complexity is O of n1 plus n2. So with this you can get a rough idea of how many digits will be there in the final product. The safe hour bound for the number of digits in the product of any two numbers is around n1 plus n2. Right. So let us see how we can solve this problem. So the very first thing that uh, we would like to discuss is that what if the numbers or one of the numbers is negative, right? So we have been given the input in the format of a string, right? So let's say the numbers are like these. Now if they are in a string and the number is negative, definitely the first character of the string should be this minus sign, right? So we can keep track of it. And let's say I have a boolean variable which will keep track whether my result will be negative or not, right? So initially it is equal to 0. Now I check if s1 of 0 is equals to this negative sign or not, right? If it is equal to the negative sign, I can take the XOR of negative with 1, right? And what I can do is I can write s1 is equals to s1 dot substring 1. So what this will do, it will actually remove this negative sign and only give me the result, right? So what is the purpose of this negative sign? That negative sign will help me to determine the sign of the product, right? But I will be using this boolean variable negative or NEG to take care of that. So what I can do is I can take the rest of the values from this thing. I don't need this negative sign anymore, right? It is just useless to me. So if this condition is true, I will do these two operations. Similarly, I'll do the exact same thing for string S2. Now the reason why I'm taking negative XOR1 here is because if the value of negative is initially 0, I take XOR one time, it will be equal to 1, right? So the result of this particular expression will be equal to 1. If I take XOR one more time, let's say the second number is also negative and I take the XOR, so I don't have to write anything else. I just have to write the same thing. If I take XOR one more time, these two ones will cancel each other and the value of this whole expression will be equal to 0. Otherwise, if it is 0, the XOR will always be equal to 1, right? So this is how this XOR will help us to determine whether the final number is negative or not. Let's say we already know now the product is negative or positive. So we will keep that information with us and that will be stored in this variable, right? So now once we have this particular information, how do we actually multiply the numbers? Now, and now there is one thing for sure that the, both of the numbers will be positive and will only be consisting of digits, right? Since we've already removed the negative sign, the strings will only be consisting of digits. So how do we multiply these numbers? For this, I believe you must be familiar with the elementary level mathematics where we learn how to multiply two numbers, right? So whenever we are given a situation like this, what we generally do is we multiply these two numbers and let's say this is nine and then we multiply these two numbers. Let's say this is six and then we multiply these two numbers. Let's say this is three, right? So this is what we generally do. Now what we do, we leave this one place, we used to write like a cross here and then what we do, we multiply these two numbers that is 6, we multiply these two numbers that is 4. So now we multiply this number by 1 and we have 2 and then we put 2 cross. So finally what we will do, we will take the last number from here and multiply it with all the digits in the first number. So since it is 1, I am going to write the digits as it is and then we calculate the summation of all of these values. This is 9, this is 12 and 1 here, 11 and this is 5 and this is 1. 
right so this will be the product of these two numbers i believe this is correct so the basic idea is to take each of the digits from the second number and multiply it with all of the digits of the first number so if you're taking the rightmost digits we just write it as it is if you're taking the second digit from the right then we put across and then we write all the products and if you take the, the third digit from the right and we put two crosses and then we start writing all of the digits so what we did was we calculated all of these values and calculated the sum at the end right but what if i don't want to calculate all of these values i already know that 9 is going to be put in the zeroth column let's say these two six will are going to be put in the first column these three elements are going to be put in the second column and these two are going to be put in the third and this will be in the fourth column i already know their exact positions the only thing i don't want to do is i don't want to have all of them together in the memory right i don't want to take up space take up so much space in my memory so what i'll instead do is instead of writing these numbers i'm just directly going to add them to their respective positions so now what i'll do is let me just create an array Since I already know what positions these numbers are going to get added to, let me just hide those positions 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let me just erase this part. So if I have 1, 2, and 3, and 1, 2, and 3 here, I know that I'm going to start from the rightmost position. So 3 into 3 is 9 here. Then 3 into 2 is 6 here. Then 3 into 1 is 3 here. Right. Now I have covered all the digits for the rightmost digit of the second number. Now I am going to start from this particular position and I have to put a cross here. Right. So let's say this is 3 to 2 that is 6. So 6 plus 6 is actually 12. I cannot write 12 in a single box. So what I will do is I will take this particular carry 1 to the next position. Right. So I will update this with 2 and 1 will be carried over here. So this will be 3 plus 1 4. Right. Now I do 2 into 2 and I will have to add 4 to this particular number. So this is going to be 8. So 2 into 1 is 2. So I have covered all the numbers for this particular digit. Now what I will do, I will take this particular digit and this time I will have to start from this particular position and mark it as cross as well. So now what I do, I multiply these two numbers, 3 into 1 is 3. So 8 plus 3 is going to be 11. I cannot write 11 like this. So instead what I will do is, I will take the rightmost one and I will put the rest of the digits in carry. So 2 plus 1 is going to be 3. See here. Right. And now I will have to multiply 2 with 1. So I will have to add 2 to this particular position. So it is going to be 5 now. And I can just take 1 into 1. That is going to be 1. Right. So we see that the result is 1, 5, 1, 2, 9 in both of the cases. What I was doing here, I was calculating all of the numbers separately. But, but what I can also do is, I already know that uh, certain numbers are going to be at certain positions. So I can directly add them to my result and at each step, whenever my sum, let's say my sum at any particular position or let me just better write it as result at any particular position is greater than 9. What I will do is I will have to add the excess value to position plus 1. So this position will be equals to result of position divided by 10 and the result of position, I will have to take mod with 10, right. So what will happen, let us say the result at, at a particular position is 319. So I do not want these extra numbers to be at my current positions. So I will take them to position plus 1. I only want this last digit, so it can be written by doing mod 10, right. So this is what I will do in case the result of the current position is greater than 9, right. I just have to keep adding the values to my positions and whenever it becomes greater than 9, I will have to move it to the next position. So the idea behind this problem is very easy. It is just elementary level mathematics. Now the difficulty of this problem only boils down to how you decide to implement it. Right. I will tell you implementation which will really help you and which will make your work much easier. So what you can do is, so let us say you have two strings, 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6. First of all, you can reverse both of the strings, 3, 2, 1 and 6, 5, 4. I will tell you why. Now you can, what you can do is, you can use two for loops, right. So the first for loop will be traversing through this particular string and the second for loop will be traversing through this particular string. So what will happen, let us say this is the first for loop, 
and this is the second for loop your i let's say i at this particular position and j is at this particular position i will be fixed and j will be getting incremented each time so 6 will be multiplied by 3 then 6 will be multiplied by 2 then 6 will be multiplied by 1 right similarly for 5 with 3 5 with 2 5 with 1 this is exactly what we were doing while we were writing it manually right now your result so let's say your result array is something like this right it will be having some index of 0 1 2 3 4 right you already know that for this particular digit you had to start adding values from the zeroth position from this particular digit you will have to start adding from this particular position but now you don't have to think much about it why because in this case your 6 is at position 0 your 5 is at position 1 your 4 is at position 2 so you can just directly start adding values from the index denoted by these particular values right so let's say i was talking about 6 i can start adding values from position 0 if I was talking about 5, I can start adding values from position 1. If I am talking about 4, I can start adding values from position 4. Right. Otherwise, what you will have to do is, you will have to calculate these indexes manually if you write it, if you write the strings in forward order. So, this will just make your implementation a little bit easier. And one more thing, since you are doing everything in reverse and your result array is also in reverse, your answer in the result array will also be in reverse. Right. So, at the end, what you can do is, let's say you had some initial zeros in your answer. Right. So, as soon as you encounter a first non-zero value, let's say 1 was here, you can start taking these values in your answer. Right. So, this is also one more thing that you need to take care of. You don't have to take these initial zero values. You have to completely avoid them. Right. So, after removing all of these zeros or after ignoring all of these zeros, as soon as you found your first value or your first non-zero value, you have to take all, the, all those digits in the sequential order. So, you can start traversing from right to left, ignoring all the initial zeros and as soon as you encounter your first non-zero value, you can take, you can start taking values from there. Now, at the end, you will have your answer in your answer string, let's say, and at the end, if negative was true, this is the negative variable that we initially use, I'll do it like this, I'll append a minus in the front of answer and I'll write answer like this, right. So, this is all you had to do and you can just now return this answer string. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution and now let us have a look at the implementation because I believe the question is not difficult only the implementation might take some time and that is the only thing that will trouble you. So let us have a look at the final code. So you see what I have done is I have initialized a boolean variable with 0 and if s1 of 0 is negative I will just take xor of negative value with 1 and I will mark my s1 as s1 dot substring 1. If s2 of 0 is negative that means I will again have to take XOR with 1 of this negative variable and I will update my S2 as S2 dot substring 1. Now I just reverse both of the strings and I calculate their sizes, right. So S1 size is n and S2 size is m. Now I create my result vector. So it is a vector of integers and the size is n plus m plus 20. So this 20 is just to take a safe upper bound and the number of digits will be roughly equal to n plus m. Now all of the values are initialized with 0. Now I do a simple for loop for int is equal to 0, this is for traversing through the second string, right, you see here it is written m here, so it is for the second string, I initialize my position with i, I have already told you why this is going to be i, now I take the first digit as x which is the digit at the ith position of the string s2, right, now similarly I am going to take the second for loop for traversing through the string s1, I am going to take y which is the digit at the jth position of the string s1. Now, I just increment x, uh, x into y into my result. If result of the current position is greater than 9, then I am just going to add the extra value to position plus 1 and I will take the last digit of the result of position at the current position. Now, after all this has been done, I can just increment my position. So, at the end, I will initialize my found with 0. So, you will see in a while what this does and I will initialize my answer string with an empty string. Now you see I am just traversing from the back in reverse order. If res of i, that means if res of i is greater than 0, that means I have found a non-zero value, I will mark my found as 1, right. So if found, only then I am just going to add my current number into my answer string, right. So now you see what this found does. As soon as I find my first non-zero value, this found will be 1 and after it, I will add all the characters into my answer string. Right. So, if negative is 2, I will just append this particular minus in front of answer and then I can just return my answer variable. Right. So, this was all about this particular problem. Now, let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works.
So you see, it passes all the test cases, and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video, and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you, and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free, of course, and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye bye.